We begin by previewing and combining Apple Loops, which are pre-recorded music snippets that automatically match to the tempo and key of your project and are designed to be repeated seamlessly. So ideal for live loops. So let's go to Logic, File, New from Template, and under Tutorials, we're gonna choose the Live Loops template. Click Choose, and that will load a pre-recorded template. And what we'll do is we'll just delete all of these by, I'll keep that top track there, but this one here, add content to the grid. Down to here, if I hold down the Shift key, click in the track header, you can see that it's selected them all, and then I can backspace and delete and that then just gives me one track so there's my normal sequencer my normal step sequencer or my workspace so if you've been using logic for a, a long time you've been used to using the workspace if we just click over now to this function here we're into our live loops grid so we can begin by Let's zoom out a little bit so we can see that's it that's great and we're going to open our loop menu here our loop browser which is uh, the letter o on the keyboard so here we go here's our apple loop browser and we can filter by instrument by genre i can drag that down not let me drag it down maybe let me there we go instrument genre or descriptor or by favorite so if we see a loop and we like it we can add it to our favorites and it'll ap appear as a favorite you can see then where I clicked it it played it automatically and you can see that it was rather loud when I played it, so I had to turn it down. So what we can do now is we can look for some loops and uh, start to drag them in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually search loops here just to show you how to do that. And I'm going to look for a loop that you'll all have as long as you've downloaded all your uh, Apple loops, you'll have these on your hard drive. So let's go to, to this one here, J Dance Kick. And we're just going to pick it up, hold, and drag it into the first box. That's our first live loop. So let's now add another one. Let's add some bass. And we're going to add zip line bass. So again, same process zip line bass. And we'll load the second one. Perfect. In it goes. Notice that the, the, the name from the actual loop itself then appears in the track header, but it didn't do it here because I was using a track that was already there, but I could just quickly name it like so by double clicking here. So there we go, that'll do for the time being. Now we can preview them. So playing loops we can play them and down here we have what's called a scene trigger down here we have what's called a scene trigger and if I play it both loops will play I can click stop up here to stop or press the space bar to stop play or press the space bar and playback stops immediately the live loop grid ensures that all your cells can play back in sync at all times while giving you real-time control over which loops you want to start or stop the cells are organized in columns that constitute scenes that can represent different song sections so if I move my pointer over to my kick you'll see that there's a play sign and I can play and that will just play the kick. And as I move down here to the bass and play it, it'll cue it up and play it. 
in time with the kick. You can see they're flashing to indicate that they're queued. So it waits, when it's queued, it waits for the beginning of the next bar to start playback in sync with the kick loop. Another way to queue a loop for playback is to select the loop and then press return. Down here at the bottom, we have something called a scene trigger. So here, when I play the trigger, both loops play together. And I can stop it here. Like so. As you start working on a section, the chances are you'll want to keep some of the loops you've used for the next section. So an easy way to start creating a new scene is to duplicate the scene you have and in the new scene, delete some of the loops and add some new ones. So at the bottom down here, if you control click, so press control, hold it down, click, and you can see there, there's a function to duplicate. So click duplicate and that is duplicated and contains exactly the same loops as scene one. So you now have scene two. So let's edit scene two to add some extra loops. So here where it says zip line base two, there's actually a few bases in that family. And we can just go here to the top left of the, of the loop, click, and we'll see where there's additional loops within that family, which allows us to quickly swap loops. So that's now a different loop to the first one. And I've just found a, I just did a search on yearning synth guitar. And I thought I'd just drag and drop that in. And incidentally, obviously all of this is manipulated on the fly. So if I, I've just been thinking it's too, too slow. So I'll, I'll just type in a new BPM up here. And now let's trigger scene two. Maybe a bit too quick. And that's scene two. So I'll stop there for the sake of this demonstration, but you can of course continue to add more scenes to your song. And just pay close attention to the exact moment in time when you trigger a scene. So when you click a scene trigger, Logic waits for the next bar to switch playback from the current scene to the, uh, the one you click. So if a cell contains a four bar loop, it may sound unmusical to switch to another scene before the four bars are finished playing. So for example, I'm going to click this scene. And you can hear there it retains its uh, tempo.